We've been asked lately, how come we haven't been using a Lone Star? And honestly, we have. It's just been on different channels, the Flat Top King. So here we go. The Lone Star Pellet Smoker today. We're rocking the smoking pecan, but we're throwing a twist in it. Since the Lone Star can add the wood chips, I have a whole thing of hickory that needs to be used. So let's do it. So we have, you can use up to a 50-50 blend. I'm going to use about a 30% blend. I'll show you one really quick. Three scoops. One scoop. Then I'm going to work on this whole box and then get this loaded up on the Lone Star. When it's all said and done, it should look something like that. Pretty excited. Pecan shell pellets and hickory wood chips. We have a brisket. Uh, when I was going through the store, I was looking out at them. Some of them were ranging up like 18 pounds. This happened to be 10 and a half pounds. Just to be brutally honest, I thought the time restraints and the fact that it really looked like it was almost in perfect shape to begin with, it didn't seem like there's gonna be any trim around the edges. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a try. So we're gonna trim the brisket up. I'm going to not trim it as much as I would a sliced brisket. We did our 94th grandfather's birthday party we had chopped our, brisket our grandfather's 94th birthday party what did i say our 94th grandpa's oh geez the point is the family loved it they love the chopped brisket so we're asked a couple of times actually through the comments um why did we decide to chop the brisket and that's really because why we, we one of them was sliced and one was chopped and the family really seemed to like it so put it on slider buns all that stuff so Alrighty, brisket's trimmed up. We have our fat separated. I'm gonna smoke that along with it so that fat can render out for our smoked beef tallow. Probably the one of the worst butchering jobs I've ever done on a brisket. So we're gonna flip it over really quick so you can't see it. You can pause it if you want to. Hot sauce. This is the deal. This is gonna be the binder. We're gonna go pretty heavy on that. Get that rubbed in. All those nooks and crannies that I screwed up, perfect application for this. All right, after that's rubbed in, we're gonna make this the presentation side. So uh, this side down first. And you're gonna use your uh, favorite like fajita style Mexican blend, maybe a taco seasoning, whatever you wanna use. Just so happens that we have a house blend in hand. Hint, hint. And we are going to season this liberally. All right, we're gonna insert one of our uh, Chef Temp wireless meat probes in there. I'm gonna go like that right there. Set my tallow down. Put that brisket right on top. Just like that. I get a lot of interest of how much of those smoking pecan pellets are the consumption. We'll have to do a dedicated video about consumption. You can see we went through quite a bit. That's typical in the smoker. It is quite large. Not worried about that at all. But with the price of those pellets, this is what I tell people. Since I'm going to keep running the pellet with the brisket wrapped, then I'm not necessarily worried about what pellets in there. I'd choose a different uh, flavor of pellet. So I'm just going to dump them. Remove my chef's temp. Here's that smoked tallow. I've already, uh, I didn't strain it. I'm just gonna put it on top of it. I think we got some nice color. Be inter interested to see the flavor, but uh, the color's definitely dark. I like that, looking good. And we'll just wrap it up. Fast side down, fast side up. Side down, back 
side up. Back on the smoker it goes. Uh, we pulled it roughly about 180 degrees. I kept it on there quite a bit of time. And now we're just gonna bring it up to about 200 to 205. Alrighty, we got the brisket out of the smoker. We hit about 203 to 205, somewhere through there, depending on where you probed it. Um, honestly, we're just, I let it go a little bit higher because I know we're gonna chop it. It could be mixed with all that tallow, so I don't think you're gonna lose a lot of that fat and richness. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is let it cool down. Uh, we're not gonna wrap it in towels. We're not gonna hold uh, long or anything. We're just let it come down to about, I don't know, maybe about 150 degrees, open it up, let it breathe a little bit, and then start chopping it up. Alrighty, our brisket is resting. I'm gonna take three Guajiro peppers and I'm just going to take the seeds out of them and then we're going to put them in some water, bring it up to a boil, let it simmer or let it steep, uh, turn the stove off and just let it sit in the hot water for about 15, 20 minutes. Chipotle and adobo, we just get them out of the whole can once we use what we need and then just freeze them. So I'm gonna use roughly one. And then these are the three hydrated peppers, save some of that water. Just helps it blend. I'm gonna add just a little bit in there. And give it a whirl. And just like that, you should have something that looks like that. Tons of flavor. You don't need a lot. We can always season up a little bit. Uh, I love that combination. We did that on our flat top king when we did um, tacos de papas. And we added some of the mashed potatoes when we made the crispy tacos and we loved it. So that's definitely like a house favorite. And just like that, woo, after it's cooled down some, that's what we're left with. Beautiful color. Darker than what I anticipated, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. I have a little foil pan, um, four inch deep. We're gonna use that. Remember we got our sauce. I'm gonna add just a little bit more seasoning to it when we chop it up. So, I don't know if it really matters if you cut it in half or not. Can't complain about that. Drippity drip. Boop. I do want to try it before we start chopping it up and adding things. Just see what kind of flavor we're working with here. I mean, it's cooked right, I can tell you that. Getting better and better. Doesn't take much. Take that top piece right there. It's more um, earthy notes than it is sweet notes. It's very subtle. Uh-huh. It's dang good though. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Well, that is a different flavor. The mm. smokiness. A lot more smoke flavor than what I anticipated. It's got the, almost like a caramelization of the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so simply, we're just gonna chop this whole thing up. All that brisk is chopped up. We add a little bit of that sauce. Remember, I don't want to drown it in sauce. I really want to taste the brisket. You work so hard to smoke it that long and then come back in, just a little bit of seasoning, same thing. I don't want to overdo it. Just a little touchy touch. And that's probably good for me. Now, we got to this far. We're gonna make a couple tacos. Um, honestly, we we thought about a thousand different things to make a, chimich a chimichanga, like a fried one. Um, you can do like nachos, game day nachos on the flat top king. We literally just made a couple days ago, um, cheese quesadilla ground beef nachos. Now those were fantastic. So as long as you make your Mexican beef, however you want to do it from there, you can do like chili rellenos, stuff your peppers, hatch green chilies are in season right now. Ooh. Warmed up some corn tortillas. You got your W sauce, the breakfast sauce has got that, or, uh, the green, I, I really like it. You got your truff with a lime and jalapeno. Uh, we have some guacamole left over, some pico from those nachos. And of course you got some, we did a buffalo, I don't know which one we'll post first. 
a pork belly homemade buffalo sauce with a jalapeno buttermilk dressing. That's this right here. Crispy buffalo pork belly bites. There you go. That's something like that. So really quickly, like I said, you can come up with a hundred different ways to use this. We just got you to point A to point B. What you do with it after this is up to you, but I know what I'm about to do with it. Little pico. Maybe a little bear and burtons on that one. That jalapeno lime truff hot sauce. A little jalapeno buttermilk. I might go two on that one. I just feel it, that creaminess. And then on those two, I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of guac. Pick your poison of which one you want. I'm going with the jalapeno buttermilk. Taste around the world. A little truff sauce. Different. Well, that's strong. Mm. Oh, flavor. This is that W sauce. Ooh, that's good. Kind of feel like it's a taco trio, right? Like you just get like so much different flavors from each one. And that's why you make chopped Mexican brisket. All right, guys, there you go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. I'm going to try down my tacos. I've been looking forward to taco day all day long. And those are some good tacos.